Hello, this is Reverend James Hutchings, and first of all, I'd like to say a very happy new year to you. I hope that over this these past few days of Christmas and uh, New Year, you've been able to uh, have some time for refreshment, time with family and friends, uh, and that uh, it has given you new resources for the start of the new year that lies ahead. And I wanted to begin, in fact, with um, a prayer that comes from our uh, friends in the Methodist Church that they use every year at what they call the renewal of the covenant at the start of each new year. And it's a prayer committing ourselves to the service of God and the service of others, which I wanted to share with you. I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I may endure, when there is work for me and when there is none, when I am troubled and when I am at peace, your will be done. When I am valued and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfilment and when it is lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing. I willingly offer all that I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. Now, most of us have been uh, busy taking down decorations over the past few days, but uh, this is also the season of Epiphany. And uh, in older understandings of the Christmas season, that extends all the way up to uh, Candlemas, the presentation of Christ in the temple on the 2nd of February. Uh, and uh, particularly at this time, we think about the Epiphany, which was the visit of the wise men, the Magi, to uh, see the baby Jesus in the stable. And this is our crib here that we have at home. And you may just be able to see uh, the small figures uh, of, um, maybe if I pull this back a little bit, you'll be able to see it. Uh, where have they gone? Here we are. There's one of the kings, two of the kings, and the third king, maybe just out of sight there. And it's the story of their visit um, to Mary and Joseph that I wanted to read a small part of now. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. And then it goes on. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. It's a familiar and traditional story, but there's such richness in it, the story of these searchers for truth, these wise men coming not from uh, Jesus's own land, but from modern day Iran, that area. Uh, searchers for truth, literally um, Magi were looking for truth, stargazers, uh, uh, astronomers, uh, searchers for what lay beyond. And it's a symbol of the epiphany that uh, Jesus was born for all people for all time, not just for his time and for his immediate people. And then we, of course, have the contrast in that story between uh, who the true king is. Is it Herod, 
who exerts such power and fear in his own time, or is it this baby in the manger who is indeed to be the true king? And then, of course, there's the presentation of the gifts from the Magi to Mary and Joseph. Gold, frankincense and myrrh, those symbols of uh, Jesus as a prophet, as a king uh, and as uh, their God. Uh, and it prompts you and me to think about what are the gifts that we can offer uh, in the coming year, the gifts that we have been given already. What can we offer in the service of God, of God and of others in this year that lies ahead? So this coming Sunday, the 9th of January, we will have our services of communion at eight o'clock and at uh, 10 o'clock. Our particular focus will be on the baptism of Jesus. So we move ahead quickly in the calendar to the start of Jesus's public ministry in our readings on Sunday, looking at uh, when Jesus is baptised by uh, uh, John the Baptist uh, and the affirmation from God that uh, this is his son Jesus in whom he is well pleased. So Sunday is an opportunity for all of us who are baptised to renew our baptismal vows and indeed for those who are not baptised perhaps to consider taking that step of baptism. In the evening we also have our healing service, our service of healing and wholeness when it's opportunity in quietness and in reflection to gather together to ask for God's healing presence in our lives and the lives of those for whom we have concerns. And uh, also during the week we have our usual Tuesday morning uh, service for toddlers uh, and their carers and parents. That's at 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning, uh, followed by the, the group uh, and uh, that follows after that short service. So very much looking forward to seeing you during this new year uh, and pray that uh, uh, the, these uh, early months of the year, which we know are challenging at the current time in all sorts of ways, maybe ones which, through which you can not only survive, but indeed flourish. And so I'm going to finish with the words of the Collect for the Epiphany. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ our Son, your Son our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.